Um, West Virginia, they brought in Kirk Carissa. They brought in Jesse Edwards. They have been as active as anybody in the Big 12 in the portal. Is yeah. this – did by, you by expect, way, Kerr, I guess, first and foremost? Kerr said he'll come on the show again. The other day I asked him to come on, but uh, he had a big uh, – he was hitting the golf course, and and I said, like, you probably need it. I mean, I'm sure his golf game sucks, is my yeah. guess. So I think he needs to, to you know, take some lessons. That's more important than coming on our show. Uh, but but he will make an appearance at some point. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, her and Jesse Edwards are a good start for Hugs. They're a good start, and, and he's got some talent coming back. Um, it, it's funny because Hugs was kind of the name that everybody threw out there, like, all right, NIL might end it for hugs. And instead, mm -hmm. NIL might extend it for hugs. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. It was like, did you expect to, that 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 Bob Huggins of all people would be the one to, that that was adaptable enough to do this? And frankly, like we probably should have expected it. Look at what that guy's done throughout his career in terms of the different ways that he's played. He took over a John Beeline team and played 1-3-1 for a while and had success with Deshaun Butler as a star. Then he turns into a Press Virginia team. If you remember that year when they when Press Virginia first started happening, they lost like three of their top four players to transfer in the offseason. And then he was just like, yeah, you know what? We're going to go with Javon Carter and Daxter Miles and just junk everything up and make it be ugly. Like he's able to adapt. He's able to figure out how to make it work. And, you know, if you got to get in the transfer portal and, and, and do it that way, then you got to get in the transfer portal and do it that way. So I – we should not be surprised that, that he's been able to do what he's been able to do. Yeah, no. And, and, and again, you could see when we had him on in Houston, I know you couldn't hear him, but uh, I heard him and, and asked him about the, the contract situation and everything. Cause there've been plenty of speculation that, you know, he, he might not be even asked back. Uh, he made it pretty clear. Like he's coming back and, and it's not for the short term. And I think mm -hmm. as long as hugs knows, he can impact kids, number one, right? He can take care of kids. See, I think there's a misnomer with some of the old guys in NIL. Um, Hugs is all about the kids, but but he also wants these kids to earn it. Mm -hmm. You know, and that that's the hardest part of this. It's like the kids who have earned it, like Hunter Dickinson, yeah, he's earned NIL. Now, I know they didn't go to the tournament this year, but it wasn't because of Hunter. It was because of, of you know, what was around him more than anything. Um, the guys who have earned it, that that's fair. I'm waiting for the day, and I shouldn't say this, but but I'm going to. Uh, I'm waiting for the day that a parent pay because I think some of these kids, even in the portal, are getting paid now on NIL based on their recruiting rankings. I'm waiting for the day that a parent pays off somebody who does the recruiting rankings to move their kid higher because it's only going to help them with NIL going forward. Because mm -hmm. I think, yeah. again, like I'll use a kid like, MJ Rice is an example. And again, I'm not I'm not saying MJ Rice isn't good and he, he might have a great career at, at NC State, but he was like a top what 25-ish recruit coming Something out of like high that. school. Yeah. And he averaged two points a game at Kansas this year. But his value is still very, very high. Why? Because he was a top 25-ish recruit coming out of high school. So my guess is he still commanded high NIL dollars based on that, uh, largely based on that recruiting ranking. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, I would rue the day that you found out that any of that happened because we would not hear the end of it for uh, years on end. Real quick, let me tell you guys about our sponsor for today's episode, Athletic Greens. I started taking AG1 a few weeks back. When we get in the middle of college hoop season, it can be hard for me to eat and drink as healthy as I probably should be, especially in late February and March when the schedule gets really busy. But I found that I've felt better as I've made AG1 a part of my daily routine. I take AG1 in the afternoons after the coffee is worn off and once the itis post-launch is kind of set in. And what I've found, my energy levels are up. It's improved my digestion. And as a result, I'm not only more efficient and productive in the most important time of the year for me and for the field of 68, but I'm working out more consistently. I just feel better. AG1 is so much more than just a greens powder. It's comprehensive health and the power of habit in one. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally could not be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of the AG1 formula with water, and I drink it every single afternoon. Done. Just like that. I also like that it only costs $3 a day. The price is right. 
If a comprehensive solution is what you need for your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is the answer. They are giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Free! Just go to athleticgreens.com backslash field 68. That's athleticgreens.com backslash field 68. The link is in the description below. Check it out. Support the field of 68 and feel better about yourself. 